today's programme, I will be following what is known as the mineral line. The West Somerset Mineral Railway was built between 1857 and 1864 to take iron ore from the Brendan Hill to the Watchet Harbour, where it was loaded onto ships and transported across to South Wales for smelting at the Ebervale blast furnaces. I'm here this morning in Chargut Woods. We're coming to the section of Bailen Wood, which was quite a significant part of the mining during the 19th century. We're hoping now to meet Nick from the Forestry Commission, who's going to give us an explanation at the Bailen Wood flue. Good morning, Nick. Uh, pleased to meet you here at uh, the, the Bailen Wood ventilation flue, uh, which I understand was constructed around about 1860 by Morgans Morgans, who was the Welsh mines manager appointed by the Ebervale company at that time. Well, it's obviously, it's quite an unusual aspect finding something like this buried deep in the, in the heart of the woodlands. As you say, uh, built in 1860 of uh, local Mort Slate straight into the hillside. And its function uh, was to draw air out of the mine. Below the, uh, the chimney itself, inside the fence there, is a shaft that goes vertically down and that meets a horizontal adit coming in from the bottom of the valley which took the miners to the mine face. And by lighting a fire in the bottom of the chimney and ducting it through that wooden channel, the fire drew oxygen and air out of the mine, allowing fresh air to come in via the adit. Accompanied by Nick, I continue my journey, a short walk down the old miners' trail on my way to the Langham Engine House, which was unearthed and conserved a few years ago. We've just come up from the uh, ventilation flue to this mine, um, and this is the Langham Hill Engine House. Uh, perhaps you can just give us a, a comment from the Forestry Commission's point of view. Certainly. Well, I think on a day such as today, you can see what an inhospitable place it would have been. Um, many of the features are obscured by snow today, but basically it's the site of, the, as you say, Langham Engine House that was constructed in 1866, and on it stood a big uh, single beam engine, which function was with uh, pulley wheels and, and cylinders to use flat rods to uh, pump water out of the mine, at the same time as extracting iron ore on carriages to the surface from where they would have gone on the railhead and uh, down to watch it. This was completely uh, underground for the last hundred years until from 1995 Somerset Industrial Archaeology Society and Exmoor Mines Research Group uh, gradually uh, excavated it to the point where we knew we had something worth preserving which is where the uh, lottery funded bid came in. In 1876 the mine was closed as part of a cost saving exercise by the Ebervale Company then teetering on the edge of bankruptcy both the engine house and the engine and one of its boilers were transferred to the mine of Burrow Farm. The next leg of my journey takes us to the winding house and incline where Mike Jones, an industrial historian who has studied the mineral line, tells us about its relevance. Behind me is the winding house that was built in about 1858-59 to house the winding drums that hauled the coal up the hill to Brendan Hill and the iron ore down to the bottom of the incline for conveyance to watch it. It was largely destroyed in 1917 when the drums were blown up with explosives for scrap metal for the First World War. The roof was flat and the two rails ran to the top of the roof so that wagons could be taken by locomotive to the top of the incline. It took about 12 and a half minutes for a wagon to descend the incline, a wagon that is loaded with iron ore, very heavy, to haul up an empty wagon or a wagon load of coal up the other track. 12 and a half minutes, all the time throughout the day. Mike is going to 
going to tell us more about the lives of the miners, a local inn of Raleigh's Cross, which was active during the mining period. Many lived not at Brendan Hill, but in surrounding villages and walked to work on Monday morning and returned to their homes on Saturday. Life up here was very hard. The miners were paid about 10 or 12 shillings a week, more than an agricultural labourer, but not a great deal more. The village was an artificial creation, and so the general manager of the mines acted as if he were the squire of a traditional village, taking responsibility for the men's welfare, for their housing, for their religion, and for all aspects of their life including, of course, the work in the mines. By 1883, the iron mines were no longer economic and they were closed. The Obervale Company at that time was losing money hand over fist. And so uh, the mines closed with a couple of weeks' notice. The miners were thrown out of work, of course, and they had immediately to move up country or to South Wales to find more work, generally in the coal mines. The principal mine at Raleigh's Cross was not far from the inn's location. In fact, there were numerous mines scattered along the length of the Brenton Hills and being underground, not visible to passers-by, even today. We leave Mike to warm up at the pub whilst I carry on on my journey a few days later when the weather has cleared. My next stop, which, unlike the other locations, is a fair trek down the line. I've just followed the trail down from Washford on my way to watch it. It's about the midway point at Kentsford. It's unusual that we have in the valley from Watchet to Washford two parallel lines, the former being the mineral line constructed in 1857 and being on the standard gauge. And the reason why there are two lines is that the two companies could not agree terms to use a mixed gauge railway. The mineral line, and it was the last time any locomotive ran on it, nearly a century ago, in 1912, was the scene of where an automatic train braking system was demonstrated by a Mr Angus. An unusual being an Australian and also being a solicitor. The crowds behind me on the hillside waited to watch these two locomotives set off head to head in the opposite directions with the intention to see a big accident occur. However, the system worked perfectly and no collision resulted. Mr Angus tried to sell this system around the world but was unsuccessful. The train would arrive at the harbourside town of Watchet. Watchet is a small and quaint town located a few miles up the coast from the seaside town of Minehead. Watchet can be seen as a great place of interest to visit during the summer. So to speak, it is literally the end of the line for the iron ore from Somerset, which was loaded into the ships, moored up at the pier. From there, it was taken to Newport, South Wales, and then on to the blast furnaces of Evervale. I'm standing here on the West Pier at Watchet. In front of me is one of the few remnants of the mineral line uh, that exists. Up until two years ago, these particular rails were covered by the tarmac. The original jetty would have gone out into the harbour and there were then tipping arrangements so that the vessels could be loaded on both sides of the jetty. However, after the mineral line finished and the last locomotives were in 1898, um, in the great storm that hit Watchard in the year 1900, the jetty was completely destroyed along with a lot of the West Pier and also damage to the East Pier over the 54 years period of working. With 750,000 tonnes of ore shipped from this port of Watchet, the result was, in an effect, that nobody actually made any money of it and it was a financial disaster. The expectation of in excess of 50,000 tonnes of ore per annum was never achieved. 
Join us next time as we continue to uncover our industrial heritage.